Hey friends, it's Misty here from the Dolly Foot Elf. Happy Monday. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm a little bit under the weather, but this week I had planned to do some projects that could either be like home decor or maybe gifts. And this is one of them. So last year I made a Halloween themed shadow box. And this year I decided to do a couple of them that are going to be more Christmas themed. So this one is using the Holidayville grab and go box from Stamp Anything that I unboxed a couple shit shoot it's probably been a month now apologies but um i colored the image images on the stamp anything what um youtube channel and i'll link that video down below but i'm making a shadow box with it and you can do this with any images any dies etc this is just one idea this is available for sale um forty dollars plus pri medium priority rate shipping here in the u.s I don't know that this would be a good idea to ship internationally. I shipped something to someone internationally and the box, no matter how much bubble wrap I put in it, the box was busted. <laughs> it was busted. So anywho, um, so if you hear me say anything about stamp anything, that's because this video was originally put on their channel, but I wanted to share it here too. Um, I had meant to put makeup on and film an intro, but I'm just not feeling very well. So these are what you get. Anywho, if you haven't already, I hope you'll consider subscribing, not only here, but also on Stamp Anything's um, YouTube channel. Again, this is available. You just have to reach out through me through email, message me on Etsy, bada do. Um, don't forget to pick up some cards. There are hundreds of them in the Etsy shop. Hundreds of them in the Etsy shop. I'd appreciate it if you did. But anyway, I will be back Wednesday for another project. Like I said, this week we're going to be focusing on kind of like home decor, those kinds of things. So yeah, anywho, um, yeah, let me pass it over to past Misty and I'll walk you through this really fun and cute project. Okay, friends, let's hope that my voice survives enough to get this voiceover done. <laughs> so, um... This is the frame that I have. And I, again, will try to remember to link this down below if I can still find it on Amazon. But any size shadow box frame will do. So I've taken out the back just so I can measure it exactly. And this, bully, I believe, measured seven and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. So the frame is a little over eight by eight. I actually, I think it's nine by nine. So. Initially, I wasn't sure if I was going to do like a cloudy sky or if I wanted it to be a nighttime scene and I decided on a nighttime scene. So I'm bringing in the Falling Star Stencil by Stamp Anything. All of the supplies I've used will be linked in the description box down below. And I'm going to be using that on a piece of navy cardstock that I'm going to cut down to seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters. Um, along with that, I am also going to be using some kind of glitter paste gel stuff <laughs> i know i know you're like misty that's very descriptive thank you very much any kind of like texture paste um with a little bit of sparkle will do so i'm going to bring in my mat and i'm going to go ahead and get this ready um my only like if i were to do this all over again i kind of messed this up where i um kind of had an overlap when i was doing this um, and if I had to do it again, I would be a little bit more cognizant of what was going on. Luckily, um, the rest of the elements pretty much kind of covered it up. So it ended up not being that big of a deal. But if that's something that bugs you, then it's definitely something to keep an eye on. So I am just going to go back and forth and putting all of this on. And then here I move it and I'm like, uh oh, I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't really leave a spot for me to be able to do this um, without it overlapping and without it causing um, an issue. So again, you know, do what you can do um, or, you know, you can even skip this part, go back and try to break it up, etc. So any of those things will do. So once I've done that, I went ahead and took that and put it underwater so I wouldn't, um, so I can clean it real quick. 
Okay, so we're going to be die cutting. And so I'm cutting the sleigh. I cut the outline of the sleigh in a red paper. Then I cut the actual sleigh, like one side of the sleigh box, um, out of red. Here I'm using the cave builder die and I have um, used both pieces. I cut the big one just once and the other one twice because I'm going to make a pretty tall cave. So I just used some gray cardstock from my stash and I am using a Stamp Anything ink to ink up the edges and give it a bit more dimension. So you could skip this part if you want to, but I would really encourage you not to. And the reason why I went with gray rather than brown is because since navy is cool toned, like I was already using cool tones, I kind of wanted to stick on that side of things. The greens I used are more of, a, more of a, not necessarily cool tone, but they don't pull warm either. They're more of a neutral green. The red is definitely a more cool tone, a more blue red rather than, um, you know, a darker, deeper red. So yeah, I just wanted gray and I went with gray. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a scrap piece of black cardstock and I'm going to adhere the um, big one to this. That way the opening of our cave is black and I'm just using some of the liquid glue that came in the Stamp Anything box. I got a little heavy handed and um, the glue does dry clear, but it doesn't dry matte. So I went ahead and tried to remove that from a with a dry baby wipe. And then later I will come in with an adhesive eraser to get the rest of it off. I'm just using my scissors to trim out this excess um, black, that way it is not in the way. And then I'm trying to decide how I want to adhere these layers together. So I'm just going to adhere them with liquid glue and then I'm going to adhere all of this to our background using um, some of the pop dots that were, or the pop-up squares that were in the grab and go box. So as I mentioned, this one is either almost gone or it may have even sold out by now. I don't know, but if you haven't picked it up, I encourage you to do so. Um, it's a fun one, especially if you love anything the Grinch and I just think it's so fun, so much fun. So I'm gonna adhere these together and what you see at the top of my window, or excuse me, of my desk is some fake snow. <laughs> <laughs> Oy vey, y um, I get a little heavy handed with this. In the end, I love how it turned out, but um, just trust the process is all I have to tell you. Just trust the process. And if you're new to me or new to my videos on this channel um, or new, like you don't follow me over on my own channel, The Jolly Fed Elf, I am not someone who does a sample before doing a project, I get an idea in my head and I just like to go full full force with it. Um, and so sometimes that takes a lot of trial and error. Sometimes it works out exactly like I have it in my head. And this was kind of a little mixture of both, to be quite honest. And so, yeah, so that is it. I went ahead and added some snow to the top. So I am using the liquid glue again to add on this um, kind of outline. I wanted the body of the sleigh to just be red, but I did want there to be some pretty sparkly accents. And so that's why I went ahead and cut it out. So this is actually a treat box die. Um, but as you can see here, you don't have to cut it out with a treat box. And then I had cut out the um, sled part of the sleigh out of silver paper, and I went ahead and picked the side that coordinated. So that was the thing that I had to do that I don't know that if I caught that on film good enough, is I had to decide which way I wanted my sleigh to face. And that is the side that it, I ended up cutting out. And I made sure that I cut out the right sled as well. So I am using some of the score tape that came in the kit. Um, you want a really strong adhesive for this. So you're gonna see me go um, between the three of them. The um, foam squares in this kit are super strong. It's probably some of the strongest foam adhesive I've ever worked with. So here are my characters. I colored these last week, if you missed it. I will try to remember to link that in the eye um, and in the description box down below. Um, I knew that um, I was gonna do this project and I knew doing all of it in one video, that video, I mean, this video is already almost 27 minutes long. So I knew that one would be like, oh, way long. <laughs> so here I'm just trying to get an, an idea of what I want the layout to look like. 
um, if this is the right direction that I want to go. Um, I actually took a picture of it and I'm looking on my phone to see if I like it, if I like the placement. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get this adhered to the back of the um, frame. And once again, I'm using the kind of score tape that came with. So my frame, the back of it is a canvas. If I had to do this all over again, I would make sure that I would have re re removed that canvas. But um, this stuck. It didn't stick all the way though. But unless you're going to be pulling this in and out of the frame, it's not going to matter. But as I said, going forward, if I were to do this one again or use the same um, kind of frame, I would go ahead and either take off the canvas or um, like the whole entire thing or just take off the kind of um, fabric part of it. So it fit perfectly because I measured, which is amazing. <laughs> that doesn't always happen for me. So we are always glad when it does. Don't threaten me with a good damn, right? Right? So I brought in a piece of white cardstock because I knew that I wanted to make snow drifts. So I have, I keep paper like this. Um, like I have a, a cloud template that I use for stenciling. Um, I had this one on my desk that I used for making um, some snow drifts on a different project. So I just drew them on a piece of white cardstock and I am cutting them out. I went ahead and switched to a pair of Tim Holtz scissors that were a bit more sharp, <laughs> not quite as dull. And I cut um, these out and they're not perfect but they don't have to be because they're snow banks and they're not going to be they're not really the star of the show but they are there to add some dimension and to add a little bit more to our scene so once i get them all cut out i'm going to bring back in our background and just kind of lay them out seeing which one i want to go like as the top piece um, at the top of the canvas and which one will end up being the bottom piece. I want to make sure that the bottom piece is one that has a straight edge. So I'm going to bring in some more ink. This is a blue ink. Again, I'll have all the supplies listed down below. Um, I'm doing the darkest around kind of the edge of the top, but then I'm going to go ahead and fill in the entire thing with whatever left is on the brush. So I've mentioned in the past, I don't like to shade snow with gray. For me, it just always looks dirty. Um, at the end of the day, you have to color how you want to color. And if you like to shade and, you know, shade snow with gray, go right ahead. It's completely up to you. But like I mentioned, I just, I just prefer blue, just shading with blue. It's just more pleasing to my own eye. But yeah, so I'm going to get that done. And then we are going to get these adhered. Let me tell you, my throat is killing me today. I did a lot of talking when I was filming earlier and I was like, oh, mm. <laughs> maybe I need to have some hot chocolate or something. So I hope you guys had a fantastic Thanksgiving if you're here in the U.S. My husband and I were completely by ourselves this year, um, as we've kind of been the last few years, right, because of the pandemic and everything. So um, we have a favorite pizza place here in Dallas called Two Guys from Italy. If you are in Dallas and um, it's off of Webb Chapel in 635, it is it's the best pizza in the Dallas area. Carne Rosso, Carne Russo, Carne Rosso is also good, but that's a completely different type of pizza. This is actually cooked in a pizza oven. <laughs> it's not on a conveyor belt. They use fresh mozzarella. Um, they cut, they slice up their fresh meatball. I mean, it's just really, really good. Um, my husband has been eating it since he's been in Dallas for almost 30 years. And he introduced it to me back when I moved down here 13 years ago. And we don't have it nearly as often as he would like to. But the past four years now, we've had it at Thanksgiving rather than Thanksgiving food. Because neither one of us are big, like neither one of us really care for turkey unless it's smoked. Um, the only Thanksgiving food that I even miss at all is chicken and dressing. And it's been several years since I made that. Okay, so I'm going to be adding more of this snow. And as I mentioned, I'm going to go a little ham. <laughs> I'm going to go a little ham with this. But as you can see, I left to the right side um, free because that is where I'm going to adhere the cave. 
And I just felt like it didn't need to have snow over there um, because it wasn't going to be showing anyway. So I am using some of the foam squares from the kit and I'm just going to, I'm going to load them up. I like using a lot of adhesive just because a lot of times I either sell my cards or projects um, and I don't want them to fall to pieces. So I like to use more adhesive than you probably need, but at the same time, I want it to, I want it to stick around. I want it to stick around. So anyhow, I think that's the big debate. It's like, do you call it dressing or do you call it stuffing? And do you feel like they're two different things? I find them to be two different things. Chicken and dressing is not made in the bird. Um, it's uh, it's a side dish and it's made with, you know, chicken, celery, onions, chicken broth. And for me and my family, a whole bunch of sage. <laughs> and it's made with savory cornbread, not sweet cornbread. Um, we were not a sweet cornbread house. So every once in a while, I'll get a, like, I'm like, ooh, I really want like a corn muffin. That's what I consider a corn muffin is sweet cornbread. And I'll, you know, try to find one. But other than that, savory is the way to be. I want it cooked in a cast iron skillet with a ton of baking grease. That's, that's the way I like it. Cornbread, at least. So I went ahead and added um, some Scotch mounting foam to just um, the pot, excuse me, the pots, the parts that weren't going to touch the cave on this layer. The next couple of layers, I'm going to add it to just the bottom. But here especially, I didn't, it didn't need to have the adhesive so much on the, um, the cave. So there is a little bit where there isn't anything. So I went ahead and used a few of the squares. But other than that, again, it wasn't really necessary. So I do have some that hangs over. I do go and trim that off later. Um, I wanted to just make sure I would rather have too much than not enough. So I went ahead and made sure that I had, you know, I could cut it off before I finished. So since I'm going to be tucking the Boy Grinch into this one specifically, I made sure to only add foam to the bottom of the snowdrift. Um, for this one, it doesn't really matter all that much because Max and the sleigh are going to go on top of it. But um, I did go ahead and just add it to the bottom. Oh, I lied. I added all the way everywhere. Oops. <laughs> I literally just watched this. I was editing it. Oh my word. I saw it. I'm sorry. I'm apologizing. I apologize. Lord, I apologize. So here you can see I am cutting off the excess. I apologize that my phone got into the frame. Um, when I am uh, creating like this, I just turn on some YouTube and just let it go and have something to listen to as I create. So I brought in the frame just to make sure that it was fitting <laughs> and to see if I needed to trim off a little bit more. And of course I did. So I did trim off a little bit more. So I'm going to bring in some more glue and some snow. And this is where I say I got a little heavy handed. So initially I was just going to go on the kind of outline of the snow drifts. And then I was like, well, what if I just do the whole thing in snow without thinking that I needed to adhere images to the paper? So if you're going to create this, recreate this, I would wait until you have your characters where you want them to add the rest of the snow. Um, just because it doesn't, it, like it's, it's almost impossible for it to adhere um, anything to it, but I was able to do it. But like I said, I would just, I would skip this part until you have all of your characters where you want them to be. Um, the characters like Max and the Grinch plus the sleigh. And um, so that was a little bit irksome of me, but I did it and it's done. <laughs> and now I know if I do this again, using the fake snow, that I need to make sure that I have them adhered before I bother with that. So speaking of the Grinch, I'm going to bring him in and we're going to figure out where he's going to go and what kind of adhesive he's going to need. So he is going to need um, a double uh, 
amount of adhesive up by his hat because he's going to be in front of um in front of that cave and there are two um levels between him and it so I do add some extra adhesive to that. And then for the bottom of his feet, initially I was going to add some glue to the front, but I didn't find it to be necessary because he was so well glued on with his head and his upper body that it wasn't really necessary. But if you felt like you needed to, you could add a little glue to the front of his boots um, when you tuck him in to the uh, snowdrifts. And there you can see just how uh, good that foam adhesive is because it kept getting stuck to my fingers. I was like, what are we doing? Oh my goodness. And again, here I am going in with the glue and I'm bringing in some of this um, wrapping paper or the backer paper from the scotch adhesive um, and doing that and then putting down the snow. But again, I should have skipped this part until I had everything else glued down. But again, hindsight is 2020. So I'm going to go ahead and glue in the sack to the sleigh, and I've glued it just a tiny bit at an angle, not a whole big angle, but enough. Um, that way it looks like it's sitting in the sleigh. And then I'm trying to do my best to save all this snow as much as I can because I didn't want to waste it. But it ended up all over me, all over the floor, all over my craft table. It got a little bit of everywhere. So I'm using more of those foam adhesives just because I wanted that part to stick up a bit more. Um, plus, it's going to be on a different level than the bottom is. And that's why I'm using the foam on top and the more kind of a score tape at the bottom and again this actually didn't have much of a problem adhering because it's so sticky um both of those adhesives are very very good <laughs> they're very good for sure so i am using my bone folder to kind of um go over that score tape to make sure that it's adhered complete burnish that's what i'm looking for and then I'm going to add some of the liquid glue to the actual sled part of the sleigh. And then we're going to get this adhered. And I'm just holding down the actual sled part um, until it adheres. For Max, I'm going to go ahead and add um, just this tape. And then behind his antler, I'm going to cut one of these squares in half and add that. I, I don't think I do that on camera. It's something that I don't think of until I come back to it later. So um, you're going to want to make sure you do that because it's going to, he's going to go on a second level as well. There's going to be two levels for him. Um, so you just want to make sure that it goes in the right spot. So once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to do our frame. So I am adding in some snow to the bottom and then I'm going to bring some of the Santa hats and some of the other uh, sprinkles to add into the snow. Um, this frame, and I'm using a Swiffer duster to kind of take away some of the static but um, I didn't want to add a whole bunch of these sprinkles because I wanted it to look like snow, but I also wanted to use some of them too. Um, this was a little different from the last um, frame I did. There, The last frame I did, there was like a space and then um, a spacer for the glass. So there was a space between the front of the frame and the glass where you could put stuff. And then the glass kind of protected what was on the inside. And this one didn't have that. Um, so that was a little bit different for me. So if I had to, again, if I had to do it all over again, I may not have used this snow. I may have used something a little bit different because it did, um, there was a bit of static in it. So some did get on the top, but there wasn't any way to kind of prevent that. 
So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I get all of those pushed down and we're going to get it um, ready to go. So here's what it looks like before it's completely done. And this is when I realized I'm like, oh, I'm completely done. And I was like, wait a minute, I was going to put a bow. <laughs> I want to use some of the ribbon. So I'm going to bring in the thicker of the two. Now, I wish I could tell you that I am a world champion bow tire, but I am not. What I will say when you have a ribbon like this, once you go in inside like this, you're going to want to turn it so um, your pattern is on the outside and you just kind of have to fiddle around with it. I am the world's worst. Like I would never be able to teach you how to tie a bow because I can never remember until I'm in the middle of it. But you can kind of see that I keep twisting it and turning it and twisting it because I want to make sure that the print is completely out. Like there's no, there's none that's white and some of that isn't. So this is a regular lighter and I just take it and barely kind of burn the edges of it and that prevents the um, ribbon from fraying. It's especially important when you're using like a satin ribbon, etc. So um, I just wanted to make sure that that happened and then I thought, oh, I'm going to put these two together and then I was like, you know what? No, I just like the big bow all by itself on the top right. So that's what I end up doing. Um, initially, I thought I was going to have to get out my hot glue gun, but I was actually able to attach this with some of that score tape. So, and it, it hasn't fallen off yet at all. So this is the final product. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today, friends. I really do appreciate you.